And the second factor that played an important role in bringing the radical tradition together was the collapse of communities like Brook Farm. During their time in Utopia, hundreds of people had learned a new way to live that was not so dependent on existing institutions. They'd eat new foods following the vegetarian diet recommended by Sylvester Graham. They wore new clothes, particularly women's clothes that were less uh, constraining and debilitating. They learned to worship in new ways and they'd done new kinds of work. Having experienced all this, it was not easy for them to return to conventional lifestyles. And so the failure of their utopia sent them out to the larger society to promote social change on a bigger scale. Thus, several Brook farmers wound up as leaders of a resurgent labor movement. Georgiana Bruce, whom, who, of whom we've heard a good bit, uh, turned her efforts to prison reform. And others became journalists, and this is where Margaret Fuller fits into the story. When Horace Greeley recruited her for the New York Tribune, she became part of uh, an exodus of former Brook farmers to New York City. Uh, and, and the staff of that paper. The Tribune was on its way to become to be the nation's first truly national newspaper, and it played an important role in bridging the geographical divisions of a growing nation and the geographical divisions of radicals within that growing nation. In the pages of the Tribune, labor activists in Boston could learn what was happening in New York and Philadelphia. And idealists on the Western frontier could stay connected to the intellectual culture of the cities. It was here that Fuller embarked on the revolutionary work of making advanced literary ideals accessible to ordinary people without access to university educations. The third factor contributing to a uni unified radicalism was the wave of revolutions that swept Europe in 1848. Though most of these were short-term failures, they set in motion the process that unified Germany and Italy and put much of Europe on a path to democracy. It was also in the context of 1848 that the tradition of political socialism, of using the power of the state to build a cooperative economy, first emerged. French revolutionaries briefly created a network of socialized national workshops, and it was in 1848 that Marx and Engels published their Communist Manifesto. Margaret Fuller was the most important American witness to these transformative events. Invited on a European tour with friends, she arranged to publish a series of dispatches in the Tribune. Her early reports focused on her meetings with leading European intellectuals. The final reports offered an on-the-ground account of the revolution in Italy, with Mazzini figuring prominently in both contexts. The Tribune was the only American paper to offer a sympathetic account of what was happening in Europe. Even Ralph Waldo Emerson was relying on the much more conservative rendition uh, of the London Times. And the Tribune's influence allowed American radicals to see their work in a global context. Inspired to reinvigorate democracy at home, American radicals after 1848 joined together in militant resistance to the fugitive slave law, in some cases, liberating uh, people who've been apprehended in cities like Boston. American radicals began demanding votes for women. They began calling for land reform that would empower the poor by giving each family a homestead. We can only imagine what role Margaret Fuller might have played in this emerging radical tradition in the United States had she and her young family not drowned off the coast of Long Island in 18. One intriguing possibility is suggested by a curious event that occurred 20 years later. In 1871, an eccentric radical named Victoria Woodhull announced that she was a candidate for the American presidency. This was a long time, of course, before women had the vote. <laughs> and briefly, she gained endorsements, listen to this, from the National Women's Suffrage Association, from the Working Men's Party, which was the Marxist Party, and from the American Association of Spiritualists. <laughs> Her platform was one of the most radical in U.S. history, 
calling for universal access to land, government oversight of all public enterprises, guaranteed employment, graduated taxation, abolition of capital punishment, protection of free ex expression, government representation for minorities, and full equality for women. The world, our country, to do good our religion was Woodhull's mo motto. But her unified movement very quickly collapsed, in part because of her scandalous past, in part because of her perhaps unstrategic attack on Henry Ward Beecher, a minister who was quite popular with some who might otherwise have been Woodhull's supporters. But what's interesting to me is that these different groups, Marxists, feminists, and spiritualists, were open briefly to an alliance. Could someone like Margaret Fuller have played a role in really keeping them uh, together in promoting radical change in this country?